Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Vlogs Meet. And the last handful of Savor at Homes that I've done have been unaged spirits. So I thought we would switch things up a bit and go back to kind of a classic. We're going to taste some scotches. Now we are tasting two scotches in particular that hail from my favorite distillery, Springbank Distillery. So Springbank is a distillery in the Campbelltown region of Scotland, and they produce three different types of single malts that come out of the Springbank Distillery. They have Springbank, Hazelburn, and Longrow. Hazelburn is the triple distilled, unpeated single malt. Springbank is the moderately peated, two and a half times distilled single malt. And Longro is the double distilled, heavily peated single malt that they produce. But I love anything that comes out of Springbank. I love Hazelburn, I love Springbank, I love Longro, I love all the ages. Actually, I will say, I will admit, I'm not the hugest fan of Springbank 10, although I have not visited it in a while. It has been a while. And the reason being, it is very hard to get your hands on now. So Springbank is kind of a small operation relative to the rest of the scotch industry. I don't know exactly how much they're producing every year, but they're producing a lot less than say like Macallan. However, the quality of spirit that comes out of the distillery is so, so, so delicious. And I think that's because they have a hand in every part of the process. So they are doing everything except for like growing the barley, right? They are malting it themselves. That means they get control over the peat levels and everything. They're doing mashing, fermentation, distillation, obviously, and maturing it themselves. So just having everything in house, I think gives you a little bit more of a leg up, a little bit more control over all the entire process. And some aspects of the process give the distillate a bit more of what's referred to as Campbelltown funk. This is like an oily, nutty, funky thing. It doesn't come across as like peanuts like you would get from say like Heaven Hill or Jim Beam, but there's a little bit of like a nutty, oily quality to this. It tends to have a really nice viscous mouthfeel as well. I think that this nuttiness and oiliness comes from how their spirits are distilled. So they have three direct fire stills and the direct fire is literally applying a fire underneath the still. And this allows some of the caramelization reactions to occur within the still. Maybe that builds up some of that roastiness, that nuttiness. They also have worm tub condensers, which I think only 16 distilleries in Scotland have worm tub condensers still. They're less efficient than the shell and tube condensers in pulling out sulfur compounds and in cooling, I, I suppose. There's a lower copper contact that's going on because it's just this tube that winds through a tub of water instead of the shell and tube condenser, which is tons of tubes that are surrounded by a coolant. So this allows for a little bit less refinement as it comes through the still. And again, I think that kind of adds to the nuttiness. Now also fermentation, the malting process, all of the steps that lead up to distillation have a gigantic impact on the distillate that's coming through. Nevertheless, if you have the opportunity to try some Springbank, definitely do it. Whether it's Hazelburn, Springbank, Long Grow, definitely try it. But because Springbank has kind of built up this like reputation for being a really delicious, pretty cool distillery, it's also built up a following, which is great for Springbank, um, but not great for the Springbank fans who miss having, wow, this fly, who miss having, you know, easy access and affordable access to Springbank. 
So usually if you walk into a liquor store and you see that they have Hazelburn, Springbank, Long Grow, even Kilkirin, the sister distillery next door, if they have Kilkirin available, it's usually marked up, um, unfortunately. And yeah, it's really good spirit, but not always is it worth the price that it's marked up for. So we were in KNL the other day, my first visit to KNL, and they had some Springbank products on the shelves. Jerry's always asking for me. He's always looking out for me, knows that what I always want in life is some Springbank. <laughs> So as I'm standing there looking at these fun, unaged rums, he says, hey, do you guys have any Springbank? And they maybe had a bottle in the back that, uh, yeah, I then took home with me <laughs> and have since been thoroughly enjoying. So without further ado, you've already seen the title of this, uh, so you already know what I'm tasting. But what I picked up was Springbank 15. I didn't have this at home. What I do have at home, what I have had for a number of years is the Springbank 15 rum cask. This is one of their limited releases and I just happened to stumble into Total Wines at the right time when they had this on the shelves. And I have tasted this Springbank 15 rum cask before. However, I thought it would be a really cool side-by-side -side to taste the Springbank 15, which is part of their core line, alongside one of their limited releases that's also aged for the same amount of time, and is Springbank, their moderately peated two and a half times distilled distillate. So a number of things are different about these bottles. Um, first of all, the rum cask is aged in rum casks. Now the Springbank 15 is aged in 100% sherry casks. So that's why it is so freaking dark. Also, something to note about Springbank, they don't do chill filtration. There's no color added. So all of the color is natural. In Scotland, you are allowed to add some uh, caramel coloring when bottling. <sighs> God, do I even dive into this right now? So some distilleries choose to do that, and this is supposed to be for batch consistency. So say if I had two bottles of the Springbank 15 side by side, but say they were different batches and one was slightly darker than the other, the customer might get a little confused, right? So it's said that it's supposed to add consistency, but anyways, Springbank does not do that. Some other things that are different is that the Springbank rum cask is at 51% ABV, whereas the 15 year here is at 46% ABV. This is also a 700 milliliter bottle. So we can now carry those in the US, by the way, um, if anyone cares. So for the Springbank 15 year, I paid 160 for this. For the Springbank 15 year rum cask, I paid about 175, 180 for this. So honestly, not bad prices for either of these. And the spirit inside is well worth it. So under the Springbank label, they have a number of different flagships. They have their 10 year, they have their 12, their 15, their 18, and their 21. The 10 year is aged in mostly ex bourbon barrels, but also has about 40% of the mix is sherry barrels as well. The 12 year is all 100% ex bourbon barrels and it's bottled at cask strength. The 15 year, as I said, is 100% sherry barrels. The 18 year is a similar split to the 10 year, but now it's 18 years old. It's 65% bourbon and 35% sherry. And then the 21 year is sherry and port. So it's 55% sherry casks and 45% port casks. Let's taste these side by side. So we'll start with the regular 15 year. And right away, you can see, as I pointed out, there's a ton of rich color in there. That's a nice, like, burnt caramel color, but not super, super dark. But yeah, some good, a good caramel color in there. 
Actually, before I taste, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of our neat community over on Patreon. And if you, the viewer, would also like to join us over on Patreon, I've got a link in the description below where you can join us over there and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you also want to support the channel in other ways, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, share the video with friends, watch more of my videos because I have a lot of tastings like this. So if you enjoy these whiskey tastings, I have a lot more for you to choose from. Okay, let's dive in to the Springbank 15 year. Mm. Okay, so there's some light roastiness and it's like borderline auto body shop, but like a lot cleaner. And if the auto body shop is just like really, really far away, I just get a whole bunch of chocolate covered fruits. This is like juicy oranges, like juicy candied oranges and chocolate covered dates, chocolate covered salted caramel as well. There's something a little bit savory in here, but what it reminds me of is like the crust of a coffee crusted steak. There's also some sweet nuttiness and it's reminding me of marzipan. Mm. This is so good. Oh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There's a nice warming quality to this and it builds into this nice creamy mouthfeel. There's tons of rich syrupy dried fruits. So like prunes and dark cherries. What are those? Luxardo cherries in the syrup. Mm. And then I get some of that roastiness, that like roasted coffee thing comes forward. There's some spices as well. So some cloves and some like charred cinnamon bark. I'm getting a little bit of that sweet orange come forward as well as like molasses and more burnt caramel. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is so nice. I should move on to the rum cask now. So this was distilled in December 2003 and bottled in August 2019. There were only 9,000 bottles produced. And this is clearly much lighter in color. Like, look at that difference. So the sherry cask definitely has a big impact on the color that you get. This I would call like a golden, golden color. Keep it simple. This also has that light roastiness, but it's like all a bunch of bright flavors. So I'm getting like a lot of bright citrus zest and the oils. There's a sweet floral thing as well. And there's pineapple. This is like grilled pineapple. Ooh, there's also some cinnamon, like almost like red hot cinnamon and some vanilla. There's almost like a grassy thing to this. It's kind of paired with that sweet floral thing. So it like reminds me of fresh trimmed rose bushes. <laughs> this one also has such a nice oily mouthfeel. Oh, it's so good. So that light roastiness comes forward. I'm getting some like peat flavor, but it's not like the burnt peat. Um, it's more of like the mossy peat and it's very, very, very light. I'm getting a lot of like orchard fruits, like pears, but maybe a little char on the pears and some apples as well. There's some of those like caramel cashews. There's clove and there's allspice and that sweet orange thing is coming through on this as well. And then kind of the finish brings you back to this sweet, very tender, very juicy pear. Mm. If I go back to the nose of the regular 15, I get like such a sweet barbecue sauce. Both of these are fantastic. And I'm very happy to have both of them. Um, and will be very sad when both bottles are empty. Yeah, what's the take home here? What's the take home? If you are able to get your hands on 
either of these for 160, 170, 180 dollars. Like I'd say very well worth the price. If it's more in the 200 plus range, I don't know. Like other things that I can compare it to, would I prefer drinking this over say like the Bulvaney 21 year Portwood that's $220? probably, but that's because I do like peat and I do like this Campbelltown funk. Yeah, I'd say if it's well over $200, like try another liquor store, try another supplier, find a friend who has some that will share some with you. But if you find the 15 year for, yeah, anything under $200, I'd say you'd probably enjoy having this. <laughs> so with Springbank, like I said, the prices have really risen. Um, and I think that is because of demand, right? Demand has risen. Um, but for the baseline products, right? We have Hazelburn 10 year and we have Springbank 10 year and then just long grow, no age statement on long grow. For those bottles, I have seen them marked for a hundred and a little over a hundred. And I'd say that's just a little bit too much. Like I would pay probably 80 for any of those. Um, have I paid 85, 90, 95? Yeah. Would I do it again? Like probably if I'm feeling like spending. <laughs> but it should not, those, those baseline products should not be over a hundred dollars. So again, like try to find another liquor store that either doesn't know what they have or is very firm that they're not going to mark up the prices. If you are a fan of Springbank, let me know in the comments what your favorite go-to bottle is. If I had to pick a favorite out of the two of these, I would like wouldn't be able to do it. So what a cop out. The Springbank 15 rum cask is much lighter and like much more like something that I would want to drink midday or if I'm like in a happy kind of like bubbly mood. The Springbank 15 with those dark fruit flavors, those chocolatey coffee notes, this is more of like a cuddle up next to a fire with a book type whiskey. Um, so you won't catch me drinking this. Well, you'll, you'll catch me drinking this any time of day, really. Uh, but like when I would crave this would be more towards the evening, whereas when I would crave this would be more towards the day. So don't ask me to pick a favorite because... I won't. And this is my YouTube channel, so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Let me know what you think about Springbank in the comments below. So Springle Bank, Sprinkle Bank. <laughs> Total Wine, I will say, is pretty good. No, I'm not going to say that. No, because sometimes things are marked up. So this was distilled in Distem December. <laughs>